Mr. Speaker. I share one thing in common with my uh, friend from Virginia. This is a very sad day, and certainly a day I never expected to have to live through. You know, I think broadly speaking, as I look across this floor, you can divide members into three groups. I'm very happy to be in the first group. The overwhelming majority of my party supports the speaker that we elected. We're proud of the leadership he's shown. We're proud of the manner in which he's been willing to work with everybody in our conference and, I believe, in this chamber. There's a second group, small group. Uh, honestly, uh, they're willing to, ca to plunge this body into chaos and this country into uncertainty for reasons that only they really understand. I certainly don't. And then there are friends on my, the other side. I mean friends, honestly, uh, with great sincerity. I have a lot of friends over there. And I recognize that my friends on the other side have a very complex set of partisan, personal, and uh, political calculations to make. And I certainly wouldn't presume to give them any advice about that. But I would say, think long and hard before you plunge us into chaos, because that's where we're headed if we vacate the speakership. You know, I personally think there's really three reasons why we've come to this point. That's because at each three of these critical minutes, the speaker did the right thing. First, there was a speaker vote. You know, he got 85 percent of the vote in our conference, 90 percent of the vote from Republicans on this floor. Yet we had a small group that decided, no, they would dictate what they want. He didn't let that happen. He fought. Now, he fought for himself, but he fought for 90 percent of us, too, that wanted him to be the speaker. And I appreciate that. Then, of course, we had the debt ceiling deal. Nobody here thought he could pass a bill. Nobody in America thought he could pass a bill. He did what speakers are supposed to do. He passed the bill. Then he sat down and negotiated with a Democratic Senate and a Democratic president and came back with a good deal, a deal that will limit spending. He did the right thing. Finally, last Saturday on this floor, we were on the verge of a government shutdown, a government shutdown that the vast majority of members in this chamber did not want, a substantial majority on my side, an overwhelming majority on the Democrat side. He put his political neck on the line, knowing this day was coming, to do the right thing, the right thing for the country, without a doubt. My friends and I agree on that, whether or not we agree on the speaker. He did the right thing. He did the right thing, I think, for this institution. He showed it could function in a time of crisis. And finally, I think he did the right thing for our party. He made sure that we could continue to negotiate and achieve some of the very objectives my friend uh, from Virginia laid out and achieve them in divided government, which calls for some degree of give and take. So I'm very proud of this speaker. I'm very proud to stand behind him. Tomorrow morning, whether I win or lose, I'm going to be pretty proud of the people I fought with, and I'm going to be extraordinarily proud of the person I fought for, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time.